the European stock markets are following what happened in the Far East, which followed what happened last night in Wall Street. Michael Power from Investec Asset Management uh, joins us on the line. Michael, it, uh, the volatility appears to have come back with a bang. We had the best day of the year for the American stock market on Wednesday. I'm not sure if it was the worst day of the year last night, our time, but it certainly is bouncing all over the place. What's caught the imagination of the market? Yes, I think we've reached some sort of inflection point. Quite what's going to happen, I don't know, but it doesn't look particularly good at the moment. Uh, I think that uh, the things that are starting to spook the market are the fact that the uh, central bankers of the world seem to be running out of ideas, that the Europeans are conflicted between the Germans and, and the ECB, with the ECB wanting to do some sort of QE and the Germans saying no, notwithstanding the fact that their own economy now is flirting with recession. Uh, we've seen some... Uh, other indicators like commodity prices starting to gap downwards, uh, oil in particular, which has been fairly resilient until a, a month ago, uh, but now down 15% plus. Uh, and of course, uh, there's no real support coming in uh, in any uh, major positive way from, from Asia. So it all adds up to a, a quite a worrying situation. Of course, on the top of that, we have um, uh, the strong dollar, but really it's not so much a strong dollar as a weak everything else. Mm. Michael, but these are all issues that we know about. Why in the last two days has it been so volatile? And indeed, why after that Janet Yellen-inspired uh, bump on Wall Street on Wednesday, have we now had such a big sh uh, sell-off last night? Well, you, you might ask that. Other people might ask, why is it taking so long for everybody to wake up to what's actually going on and smell the coffee? Um, the fact of the matter is, is there's not much out there at the moment that's positive. Uh, and when you look into even things like U.S. earnings, uh, you find that the entire EPS growth has been manipulated by share buybacks. And that since the fourth quarter of 2011, there hasn't been any organic uh, sh uh, EPS growth in the U.S. stock market. Uh, and it's all been uh, facilitated by share buy buybacks reducing the denominator. So a big, so deep breath of smelling the coffee. Michael, on another uh, aspect, though, we saw what Timmy was showing us earlier, that the resources shares have been hit harder than most. Why would that be? Well, I think that, uh, to use a phrase, it's a high beta asset. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, with the strengthening dollar, with the sense that the, uh, the global economy is, is slowing down, with the fact that actually there's been quite a lot of new supply that, that has come on stream in the last 18 months, think iron ore, uh, all of that has, has combined and conspired to create a situation which isn't particularly favorable for natural resources. Brilliant insights. And my own view is we've probably got a, a three to five year period of, of, of lackluster natural resource performance at a dollar level before uh, around 2020, we see uh, a new wave of growth coming out of Asia. This one inspired mainly from Indonesia and India is going to drive resource prices up again. Yeah, three to five years, if we're lucky. Brilliant insights there from Michael Power.